do, what I do, what I do. You know, I don't know my name. You know, I don't know how I got here. I don't know who you are. I don't know who she is, and I certainly don't know what that is. You know? Look, honey, uh, I'm going to be working some strange hours over the next week or two, so don't ask me what I'm doing because I don't want to lie to you. Hmm. Mumbe! Oh, Sven! Ah, Mumbe! I see your wife good, yeah? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. So yeah, that's some of my work. I'm a character animator. Um, a couple of years ago, I mean, I was, I was talking to a few fellow animators, and we were talking about how the Blender community. There's a lot of uh, really great modelers. There's really good, you know, lighting and, and texture people and that sort of thing. But actually, there's not that many people really getting into animation, or there wasn't. And uh, so, yeah. We were wondering why, and if you look on the Blender Artist Forum, the animation section is actually one of the quietest parts of it. So um, how do we change this around? And uh, last year at the Blender conference, I was approached by Jonathan Williamson from CG Cookie, and uh, we talked about doing a training series. So actually, early this year, we released this one, Animation Fundamentals, and uh, it, you know, it took, took you through the basics of just all the animation editors and, uh, and how to, how to just do the basic animation, uh, particularly physical animation. Uh, but I had to stop there because basically I couldn't get into lip sync. For example, this is the rig I was using. It's using Rigify. To you know, it's fairly decent, good for doing character, uh, for doing basic uh, body mechanic shots and that sort of thing. But if we were going to do anything further and get into acting, you know, and lip sync and that sort of thing, we needed something. A lot more robust. So I hired a guy, or we did. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, so we we hired a guy, and uh, and uh, Nathan Vegdal. You've probably heard of him, Big Buck Bunny fame, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, one of the be best, one of the best riggers Blender community has. And we, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's probably better if it's a little closer because we get less feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we made this, the Cookie Flex rig. Doesn't look like much at first, but basically, uh, probably the best way to show off what it can do. Hang on, I'll just rescale this. Whoa. I think this probably best describes what we're talking about. This is a flexible rig. Um, you can use it to make any character you want, pretty much, uh, and and it still remains animatable. All the the controls are still workable, and at any point you can even adjust the rig. And uh, yeah, so now we've got this this tool that we can easily teach animation, and also any anyone who wants to get into animation. Can easily get in without having to build their own rigs. So yeah, I'll just take you on a quick tour of it. 
So the first thing you'll notice, it's, it's, it's a pretty much standard rig over here, but we've got these uh, three extra controllers here for customization. So I mean, the first thing you can do, uh, you can get in and start tweaking uh, various things. You know, let's make a fat, fat character. Change the hip height. You can see the controls are all changing with it, and uh, yeah, I might uh, make the chest a bit smaller. And also into the face, we can we can also get into you know scaling things around, make a bit of it, and adjust the uh, the nose. So yeah, but as you can see, as you do this, all this still remains animatable, and it's uh, it's it's actually a very versatile rig with uh, with many fine layers of of controls. So yeah, um, this was all done to service our uh, our, our upcoming DVD, um, where we're going to be teaching training. You know, we're going to be training you how to do lip sync and acting shots. But uh, the good news is we'll actually be releasing this open source, um, uh, I mean, sorry, Creative Commons after the series is released. So this is actually just a gift to the community. We're going to be just giving it away uh, probably early December. But uh, yeah, I'll just play you this. Only you could make a woman feel like this. All I want is to be in your arms now and Always. Welcome to the Blender Cookie Animation Toolkit. In this tutorial series, we give you all you need to get into character animation in Blender. Following on from the Animation Fundamentals series, we'll be going into depth about Blender's animation tools, giving you tips on making good physical animation with plenty of character, teaching you about facial animation and lip sync, and demonstrating the complete workflow for animating your scenes in Blender. We've also developed a new rig that allows you to generate your own characters. This highly customizable rig allows for a wide range of variations, giving you a chance to animate almost any human character you can imagine. Also, as a gift to the Blender community, we'll be releasing the rig as Creative Commons after the series is released. So join us as we give you all the tools you need to make your own animated scenes of fun. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I had to show you. We've got this cool rig, and we're going to give it away. <laughs> we we still have to tweak it. Actually, there's uh, actually that's one thing I can show you. Anyone who was here earlier for Ton's speech, um, the the dependency graph issues. This is one of the things that could really help us out. At the moment, we've got limitations with uh, if you make an adjustment, you have to actually drag in the timeline to update it. We're going to fix that before we release the rig, but. That's a, an upshot of the dependency graph thing. The other thing is you have to make a copy of the file for each character that you make. When it'd be really nice just to have a master rig file and just change it with the action. Well, you can't do that at the moment, and you probably won't until they fix the dependency graph. So we're really hoping they do fix the dependency graph very soon. But uh, yeah, that's basically the rig. And if you're interested in the training series, um, it's available for pre-order pre as of today. So any questions? The cycle, and that during the cycle, yes. How much of the walking animation is going to tweak to properly reflect the scale of the character? Like the rural wall is much faster than uh, the big one. Yeah, I'll just bring that up. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Um, I'm raising this. And, hang on. Yeah, uh, a lot. But that's actually just because that's the nature of animation. A big character walks differently to a small character. Well, and one so. What from us is actually looking into um, modifying animation to allow for scale. What, as in uh, automatically modifying it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, 
that is the point. I'm, I was also anticipating whether <coughs> someone would ask whether this is for mocap. The, the purpose of this, of this rig is for people to learn animation, and that's what an animator learns. That's the art of animation. Is what is especially with walks. What is the difference? Not only in different size characters, but different attitudes of the character. <laughs> and yeah, a walk says a lot, and, and it goes for actors as well. There's they say that with if you want to get into a character, learn how he walks first. And uh, yeah, so I mean, this is not about saving work. This is about have, giving you a tool so you can really learn animation. And so yeah, the answer is uh, I animated all of those walks individually. <laughs> And actually, some of them were a little dodgy when I didn't have much time. <laughs> some of them were okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. How hard is it for me as a non animator to make more characters that work with the rig? Do I have to edit your mesh or is it easy to put my mesh in? Uh, no, it's not that customizable. You have to use our mesh right now, the base mesh. But as I said, we're releasing a Creative Commons, so hopefully you'll be able to extend it. But I think there's, I mean, we've been working on this for months and months now. Uh, and we started with a, oh, I should actually give some credits as well, by the way. It started with a design from David Rivoy, who's the, the concept artist from all the open movies. Jonathan Williamson modeled a really good base mesh. And Nathan has been doing all the rigging. But yeah, that, if you want to replicate all that work, then uh, Good luck to you. <laughs> I'm actually kind of ho hoping that um, as after we release it, that the community can contribute with, because at the moment we're limited with hairstyles. Uh, we've got like 10, I think, and, and also uh, costumes. But right now it's not that easy. We want to make it easier to add on things like that. But the base mesh itself is, it's a lot of work to change that. So, yeah. Yeah, right. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, well, OK, I did some of it, but Nathan did most of it. And Nathan's like a brain of foam, you know, he's a, <laughs> a guy who knows a lot of stuff. So uh, um, OK, yeah, well, it's, it's predominantly like a lot of the, um, the major gross uh, scaling that you can do is done with bones. <coughs> Because, well, that's obvious, because obviously if you broaden shoulders, then the shoulder joints will have to move with it. It's all done with bones. Um, then there's a layer on top of that of uh, shape keys, and that deals with, uh, you know, body fat and just various things like that, like just thickness of arms, and that is, is done with shape keys. But, yeah, the rest is, is done with bones. With the face, that was done with lattices, so you can scale various parts of the head, and that's done with a lattice to form. So we've used a combination of various techniques to get it happening. Yeah. Uh, the T-pose. Oh, well, that's, that's more. Uh, well, this basically, it comes with its own T-pose. So, I mean, you don't, yeah. That's pretty much what Dolph was asking with the, yeah, yeah. Um, no, well, at the moment, I mean, you can if you want, but it's a lot of work, basically. Yeah, the base mesh is it's very versatile. We try to make it so it would cope with uh, as many variations as you could imagine, but, I mean, obviously there will be limitations. I, th I would say, actually, I mean, this is not intended for high-quality production work. If you were going to do a, a high quality uh, short film or whatever, you would probably want to make your own character anyway. This is really for animators to get in and, and you know, you've got a, a good quality rig that you can learn how to animate with. Because previously you had, um, there's some good rigs available to, in the Blender community, but they weren't that customizable. So that was really what this is about. It's for animators to learn their craft. Yep. Oh, right. Uh, just the controls. All right. Sure. All right. Well, look, uh, actually, I'll just switch to another character. One of the advantages of having the characters um, controlled by the rig is you can actually just save off a little library. So, you know, if I select these controls here, and I've got this pose library, I can switch to a little girl or a that's, 
Whoop, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Rescale. Wow. <laughs> this is like working in the 90s again. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Tiny. All right, so the basic controls. Well, anyone who's used a Rigify rig, this rig was made by the same guy who did that, Nathan. So um, this is, you know, your basic, you've got the basic hip and torso controls. Is separated out the hip from the torso, which is actually very nice to use when you're doing a walk. Um, you've got IK and FK limbs. By default, you've got IK feet and FK arms. It's a way a lot of animators tend to work, unless you really need to use FK hands. Um, we've got sliders, so you can switch between IK and FK on each of the limbs. Um, and yeah, these finger controls are standard rigophile, rigophile style with the advantage that you have tweak controls as well. So you can really get into some detail and do some hand posing, rolling hands and that sort of thing. Uh, the face, well this was a lot of research and development and actually we're, we're still kind of tweaking it but it's, it's still like you saw the lip sync, you can, you can use it. Um, get out of perspective mode because this is doing my heading. All right, uh, what can I say about that? You've got standard uh, just like jaw controls which have rotation, translation. Um, got, uh, I see this as all pretty standard controls, just we've tried to take, there are, there are sliders but we've tried to take most of it out of this panel and onto the rig. So for example if you want to puff up the cheeks it's not a slider like it is in, on the Sintel rig for example, it's a scale um, and, and, and so on and so forth. It's, it, we've got extra parameters in the sliders, but we've tried to minimize that, so it's mainly you're working in the viewport. Uh, I don't know what else can I say. There's also the tweak layer where we've got extra controls for really sweetening up your shapes and when you need to in, in lip sync. Oh, one little new feature that Nathan came up with is this lip seal. <coughs> so that means that you can, it's cool for making a character chomp, you know. And uh, yeah, it keeps the lips sealed. Ah, yeah, here's one extra feature actually. Um, this is all well and good, but if you see if I press play, I'm getting a rotten frame rate. It's like four frames a second. So sure enough, I can you know get into the scene buttons and switch on simplify, but that doesn't really help us. So what we've done is also created a proxy rig. So that follows all the same parameters. So now we can get up to 24 frames a second for nice fast animation and uh, and it keeps like you can see it keeps the same basic form of the character you don't get clothes and hair and all that sort of stuff but you don't really want that when you're animating so um, yeah and it makes all the groups and all that sort of stuff so you can just link it into a scene you can just start making off a bunch of characters and uh, it's very quick to put together a scene and just start animating and that's really the whole purpose of this. So yeah, does um, that show you enough you think? Cool. Alright, I would make a new scene save it with a really creative file name and uh, at the moment you get into the cookie flex rig file and you link in both whoops and you make your proxy so hang on oh that's the other thing at the moment it, it, it's optimized for cycles but we're going to actually Eventually, all the shaders will be set up to work with cycles and Blender internal, just so that you know those of us who don't have amazing, uh, amazing video cards and still use it. So you make a proxy rig. Whoops, not a proxy rug, a proxy rig, and straight away you're ready to animate. Um, but the idea is. Uh, you actually, I mean, we, I can get in now and tweak these parameters and make a new character, but the idea is you, you do that in advance and you save off, say, you know, Marvin.blend and, you know, 
whatever you make you make a character and name it and so yeah. Yeah, so that's basically the deal. And so, yeah, you can bring in a whole bunch of groups and, you know, all the characters that you need and just start animating with your scene. Yeah. So that brings me up to the end of my time, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no more last minute questions? Okay, last minute question. Yeah, uh, that turns to uh, are you the one teaching? Uh, you do the yeah, that would have been confusing with Nathan doing the talking on the video. It's both of us, Nathan and I, because every animator walks, works a bit differently. I was a little wary of this. Like in the first uh, training DVD that I did, it's fine because I was bouncing balls and, and the basics. But as you get into more advanced stuff, every animator develops their own workflow. So it was important to get other another animator. Um, and Nathan's a good animator, so we're both going to do describe our own workflows so that anyone who gets into it can sort of figure out their own the best way. So yeah, it's both of us. Yeah. Cool. That's me.